to welcome in our co-hosts on this Thursday morning, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Johnny. Good morning. And a big announcement. Very good morning. Yeah. Very, what, I don't mean to uh, presume. What's your news? But am I the only one in the studio who signed a movie deal yesterday? Uh, yes. That was <laughs> so, <be> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. I just optioned the Jonathan Grave series to So It Goes Entertainment. Who's, yep. um, yeah. What does that mean? Um, that means that they want to develop actually a ten-part um, long-form television series that features the Jonathan Grave, which is the, the now seventeen books into the series. But they want to do the first book, which is No Mercy. Um, which would, um, and then hopefully all 17 of them, but that's, that, let's not be overly ambitious here. That's but, pretty um, awesome. It is pretty awesome. And the uh, so it goes, the most recent movie comes out later this year. It's called Armored uh, with Sylvester Stallone. But they don't want this, they don't, it, it's, a, it's a big book and a lot going on, so they don't want to do it as a film. They want to do it as, as one of these 10-part Would this series. be like a Netflix kind of thing? Well, not specifically, but yes. I mean, that, that's that's what they want to do. Streaming platform? Right. And I talked to them. I said, you know, I write expensive books. I mean, they're kind of big budget books. And they said, well, actually, the market now is they're kind of going for 5 to $7 million an episode. So, but, well, okay. That doesn't, yeah. that's not for me. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's not for me. Can I, can I, mean, I assume that, that signing a deal like that pays better than, I don't know, co-hosting a I, I, radio it show? It has to. <laughs> <laughs> it has it to. does pay better than co-hosting a radio show. Yes, yeah. it does. Also, so. let's say good morning to the executive director of the Berkeley County Health Department, Bill Kearns. Billy. Good morning. It, it's great to, great to be here this morning. And, you know, I think your next book needs to be tailored around pre-show conversations. Yes, I, it does. I think we would all be killed off in the first chapter, but um, by the, I, by the guest, it would be a bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> by the guest, yes, they would actually Let's be the first in. one to kill us off. Our guest, somebody's phone volume is up, by the way. So someone, someone's Bill Stubblefielding us with technology this morning. Not me. <laughs> Maybe Bill Curry. Maybe. It's the Bill Chair. It's got to be the Bill it's, Chair. It's the Bill Chair. Yeah. Let's welcome in Amy Orndoff from the Berkeley Senior Services. Amy, good morning to you. Good morning. How are things? Things are good, I think. I don't know after that. I'm, I'm not sure. G Gilstrap was saying that you're going to kill off all the men oh, or something. What's that, that about? So I don't know anything about that. What's this What's this I, discussion? I do not want to kill off men. I simply, <laughs> I simply made a statement. I have two daughters mm -hmm. that I taught to be independent, that they can do things on their own. That's it. That's it. And they can and take you out from 500 yards, and, you, yeah. and you'll never know. And so. yet she said it in a room with three men. I, I There's no shame in my game. I mean, <laughs> I am who I am. And I believe the statement was, I don't want my, my daughters to need no dirty, sucking men. That, is, that was not Wasn't the that statement. Wasn't that what you heard, John? Was that what you heard, John? That's what I heard. I'm staying out of this. <laughs> i got to sell books. Yeah, that's right. That was misquoted. <laughs> <laughs> I demand a reprint. I tell you though, if we could live stream what happens between, you know, during commercials and before the show, that's that that would be the like, show between the show. Yeah. there'd be no show. Well, <laughs> the show would be between the There'd show. be no people. <laughs> I'd fit right under that bus nicely. Uh -huh. And how? Yeah, as uh -huh. Rob backs uh -huh. it up. That's right. <laughs> and you need you both need bus drivers. We do. We do. Yeah. 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 Everybody needs a driver. Are you, uh, need a driver. How many drivers do you need? Him? Uh, we need one driver. Um, I need a nutrition driver to deliver meals. And we desperately need a registered nurse. Are the, these paying positions? They are paying position. Um, the RN position is a full-time position, and the bus driver and the nutrition driver are both part-time positions. And those are two separate drivers? They're two separate drivers. Can they be one of the same drivers? They cannot because the transportation driver uh, drives seniors to and from the senior center to medical appointments. And the other driver, the nutrition driver, um, specifically drives uh, and delivers meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And how many hours a week would these drivers be working? Um, our transportation driver could be anywhere from 20 to 25, depending on we can be very flexible with that. And the nutrition driver would be about 15 to 20 hours, and depending on how long it takes them to deliver the meals. What kind of a range of pay can you offer? Um, our, our, our pay is not great, but our atmosphere is fun. <laughs> <laughs> so does the timing work out that like a school bus driver during the be, between the sure. school runs could do this? Sure. Hmm. Yeah. Or, or like if you're a New York Times bestselling author and you have some downtime between books. In between Absolutely. books. Absolutely. Get an inspiration from, They're, you know, travel in our county. New York Times bestselling authors are very, very busy. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but after the book is done, you've got some downtime. Plus you could, you could write on the book when you make the stops. 
That's, that's right. true. I could dictate as I'm driving. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I can tell you, our seniors will give you lots of inspiration for, I'm sure they will. for various stories. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Look up at the road once in a while. <laughs> Get your nose out of that book. <laughs> Many would probably offer to drive for you. Okay. Yeah. And how about the nurse yeah. nursing position? Uh, our RN position is um, obviously in our in-home care department. And they would oversee uh, our Medicaid waiver program. Mm -hmm. And um, that basically entails visiting the homes before we put a home health aid uh, in there and um, completing an assessment, creating the plan of care, which is then assigned to the home health aid to follow exactly how it's written so they know exactly what to do while they're in the home. Is this 40 hours a week? It is 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday, eight to four, no weekends, no holidays. What can holidays you pay on this job? Uh, this job is a, in the neighborhood of $25 an hour. Um, we do have nine paid holidays, and um, we can be flexible with the schedule as long as you work 40 hours a week. And mm -hmm. how does that fit in with other RN jobs? Uh, we're at the lower scale, um, which you, is... You know what that's like. I do indeed. Yeah, indeed. yeah indeed. which is why we're, we're working really, really hard to um, have many of our reimbursement rates increased because we know we're, we're on the lower side of, of the pay scale and... You know, our nurses, they can, they can go to the hospital and work, or they can go across the state line and make a whole lot more than what we pay. Um, but they may be working nights. They may be working weekends. They're on their feet a lot. Um, so there are, there are benefits for making less. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. But, but the money if is, we yeah. Absolutely. And if, if we could work uh, to where we could get our reimbursement rates increased, that would mean an increase for everyone in the in-home care department. So is that a matter of the governor increasing the reimbursement rates through the Department of Health and Human Resources or I'm whatever it's called now? I'm glad you asked that. Um, so we worked with uh, local legislation to have more money put into the fund for the Department of um, Human Services which was done and it's put in kind of like as a backup mm -hmm. um, for when DHS spends all of their money, they can then go back to the legislators and say, hey, we've spent all of our money. We need to use this. It, it's not necessarily a reserve fund, but it's kind of a safety net fund. And um, so the legislation has done its part and now we're working with DHS to really hone in on why these reimbursement rates need to be increased. I mean, we are, we are so far below our neighboring states. The rates haven't been increased in 15 to 20 years. A lot has changed over 15 and 20 years, you know, in, in our area with uh, the expenses of, of just the cost of living. So we're now working with um, DHS to, to try to reach a, an agreement to have those rates increased. So in regards to what you pay, is what you pay dictated by what's left in your budget or is what you pay dictated by the state? A little bit of both. Um, so our budget is composed of primarily state and federal funding. And um, a lot of our services, we provide the services that it's um, paid to us on a reimbursement rate. Mm -hmm. So especially with the in-home care department, um, you know, we, we take a look at anticipated number of hours that we're gonna provide services and then we base our budget around that. So we could provide more hours of service, which means we're gonna get more money, but we could provide less hours of service, mm -hmm. which means it's gonna be less. So it's, it's a fluid, um, a, a, a fluid, activity all the time so are you in a situation where the more people you care for the more money you're losing because of the lack of a better reimbursement rate or if you saw twice as many people would you be able to pay a nurse more or would you just have to hire a second nurse um depending on the circumstance um it, I, we do have a a nurse we were looking for the second one to replace we we usually have two full-time nurses on staff um but the more hours that we can provide, first of all, it's better for our seniors. I mean, that, and that's the most important thing. The more more time we can get people in those homes, the better we are. Um, but that does also mean more money coming in, which means we can we can give our staff more money. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I think it's important to emphasize a lot of the people we see, they have absolutely no one. They have no family. They have no support system. And if we're not in their home to give them a bath, they simply don't get a bath. There have been times we've, we've walked in and a senior has fallen and has been there since we left the day before. Oh so, um, you know, it's our services are vital to be in these homes because no one else is there to check and, and make sure that these seniors are safe. Johnny.
So, so the RN position is a traveling nurse, essentially. Is that what, what I'm hearing? Um, it, 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 it is throughout the county. They do go um, into the homes. They first make the assessment of the home. Is it safe? If it's not safe, what can we do to make it safe? Um, they also work hand in hand with our in-home care supervisor with overseeing our home health aides, making sure there's no problems in the home, making sure, you know, if, if a home health aide is concerned, when you spend every day with someone, you can tell when they're having an off day. Mm -hmm. So then our home health aide reports back to our nurse. She'll decide whether or not she needs to make a home visit and make a, a, a decision on whether or not this person may need to, to seek medical treatment. Or is it something that, you know, they may have a low blood sugar and, you know, it, and take care of that. So how does someone enter themselves or enter a loved one into this program of regular visits? Um, well, th we have five different programs. So depending on where you fall, um, we have two Medicaid programs that are funded by the uh, Bureau of Medical Services and the Depart uh, Department of Health and um, Human Services. That is our Medicaid waiver and our personal care program. We have a 100% state funded program, which is our Lighthouse program. And with the waiver programs, you have to go through the process of being Medicaid eligible, um, Department of Health Which and is primarily Services a financial qualification. A qualification, assets. Um, our Lighthouse program, we deem who gets the services immediately. Um, and your assets nor your income wouldn't qualify you from that. So we look at you know, when, when we have referrals for Lighthouse, we do have a waiting list because that's the easiest program for us to get started. And, you know, you, you look at the greatest need if, and unfortunately, if someone has, you know, a family member that we know is there to, to check on them and make sure that they're eating, and we have someone that doesn't, I mean, you look at the greatest need, who, who needs that person more. Um, we also have a VA program where we provide in-home services for, for our veterans, and then we have a private pay. So anyone that, that would like to pay out of pocket um, $17 an hour for our services, we can get someone in the home for that. You know, there's a there's a commercial on television I find very disturbing every time it's on. It's the, it, it's the extension of I've fallen and I can't get up. It's, mm -hmm. it's this lady at the bottom of the stairs with a lot of laundry around her, and she's and, she, and she's crying. You know, that's just such a terrifying scenario for anybody. And the product that they're selling, I think, I might be conflating two different things. Is one of these these alert things mm -hmm. that that you have around your neck. Are there grant programs for? for such things yes it, okay. yes so um, I think medic uh, alert i think it's medical alert, yes. whatever the, the brand is right but yes and we we actually um work with adt um we have a program through the medicaid waiver program uh that if anyone would like to have that it's covered by medicaid so we take care of arranging to have it installed and um and then they are very very helpful and then if something were to happen it automatically alerts 911 but the great thing is we also get alerted so one of our nurses or a case manager is alerted that that someone has taken a fall or someone needs medical attention before so, you move on from that can mm -hmm. you we have a lot of seniors who listen to this program can you tell them how to get in touch with you if they'd like to have that sure uh you can give us a call at 304-263-8873 and we can point you in the right direction 263-8873-263-8873 you're about to follow up mr gilstrand with that question <laughs> mr kearns <laughs> In my previous life, I worked in long-term care, and so I understand the difficulty in, in getting staff, period, but also getting staff that's going to, that has it in their heart to work with a, our older population um, is difficult because you have to have not only empathy with them, but, you know, there was, many of these people that they're going to be working with have no family members, and they can tend to be left alone that this nurse may be the only ones that they see or 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 one of your drivers bringing a meal out may be the only ones that they see in a, in any given day um tell us the process you know if you come into a home and you find it's not a safe condition what does your nurses what's their next steps that they can take if they find this i mean obviously we don't want to automatically put them in a nursing home or put them in a va center if they don't need that but what's the steps uh, if they find maybe some kind of abuse or or home conditions neglect. not being well yeah, yeah neglect yeah. yeah and we are mandated reporters mm -hmm. so anytime there is of any concern we do file um, an adult protection services report we don't like to go straight to that point mm -hmm. um 
one instance that that's and we work very closely with local law enforcement um i, I don't know the city has two now social workers mm -hmm. that work for um, the city police which have been great mm -hmm. um, because that's a point of contact for us and we can work together with with getting them additional resources but if it comes down to they're simply not safe and they are in jeopardy of either hurting themselves or wandering you know we we do have to contact um, APS for those things but we have we have had situations where the state has actually came in and and taken over finances for some of our seniors because we the people that that don't necessarily have families they may have a long distance relative that finds out that you know great grandma isn't doing real well in Martinsburg so let me swoop in and take advantage of anything that she may have so we we have seen that and you know, we, we work with the city police. We also work with the sheriff's department. Um, we, we've worked with you guys before Absolutely. on various things. So we really try to pull our resources before just automatically calling Adult Protective Services. But sometimes that's just the, our, only, our only option. So switching gears totally from looking at, you know, the, the worst part. Now let's look at what, describe to us what a given day is like at the senior center. Oh my. From start, to, start to finish. <laughs> Don't with, skip Within lunch. two minutes. Yeah. It's, Tell us what a given day is oh like. Oh my. We, we have the best time. Um, there is never a day that I do not want to come to work. There's some more days that I'm more exhausted than others, but, um, you know, the, the biggest thing, I think the biggest misconception is people think that as we age, we don't want to have fun anymore. And I don't know whoever thinks that, but um, any given day of the Senior Center, we have various activities all day, every day. Um, we can get our seniors to and from the Senior Center. So if you don't drive anymore or if you're not able to, to bring yourself, we can get you there. We also have a respite program. Um, which allows caregivers that are caring for someone with an Alzheimer's or dementia diagnosis to bring their loved one to our center. It's a completely separate department with activities and uh, various things that are geared directly towards those with an Alzheimer's or dementia diagnosis. It's the same thing repeated every day. It's the same type schedule, so it's very structured. Um, and, you know, it, it, and of course our transportation and our lunches, um, but it, it's, we just really want to have fun. There's always a lot of music. There's always a lot of dancing. We do have bingo twice a week. Bingo. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, just different exercise classes to work on strengthening the core so that, you know, those seniors that are independent, they can remain independent by, by remaining strong and able to walk. So it's, um, it, it's never the same day twice. Amy, what do you have coming up on the schedule? Um, well, I did want to let everyone know we do have some farm, uh, farmer's market vouchers. Uh, we are giving those. Those are 100% free to anyone over the age of 60, and you receive $50 worth of That's me. vouchers. <laughs> free farm food, John. That's there we right. Go. That's right. Um, at some of uh, our local um, farmer's markets, there's a list of, I think, five or six of them that you can go to. But um, Did you, you know, see the glee in Bill's eye when he didn't have to point at himself yet? Yeah. Uh, right. Almost. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. 60 is not. I mean, 60, it's a number. It's a number. It's a higher you number. Know, it it, it, it hey. is. Hey, <laughs> says the lady who's not 60. <laughs> no, we, we do have one gentleman. I was telling you guys before we went on the air. We have one gentleman that is in his 90s. And, I mean, he can dance circles around anyone um he he is just phenomenal so um yeah come get your farmer's market vouchers it's fifty dollars um free produce for you fresh fresh fruits and vegetables you get that at the senior center you can pick those up uh you do need to call um to schedule a time to come in to get those because there is some paperwork to to complete so and that number is 304-263-8873 well done all right what else you got um we have our birthday bash coming up june 21st um, we will be celebrating May and June birthdays. That's always a great time. We generally have a, a DJ and have a, a giant birthday party for those having birthdays in May and June. Um, always a lot of fun. And I know that you're going to ask me what's on the menu for today. What's on the menu for today? Uh, we, as well. will, we will be having breakfast for lunch today with a cheese omelet and mm -hmm. a bre uh, breakfast potatoes, tomato juice, granola bar, and mixed berries. 
That sounds like at a, a very good. low cost. At a very low cost. Which is? Uh, if you're over the age of 60, whatever you feel inclined to give. Um, anyone under the age of 60, it is seven twenty-five. Let's say you ju- you're over 60 and you just signed a huge TV movie deal <laughs> for a 10-part series optioning on the many books you've had bestseller it's books on. Whatever is in your heart to give. But it's, but it's change. based on his salary as a co-host. That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, he could get Medicaid based on his salary as a co-host. <laughs> we know that's not right. Yeah. Uh, Aim, do you have any big yeah. uh, productions going on at the Senior Center like you used to have pre-COVID? We are um, we are very excited. September nineteenth, we will be having our very first annual um, celebrity dinner, and we will be recognizing the ladies from a Wish, um, the women investing in Shepherd. Yeah, we've had them on the yes, show. Yes, yes, we will be honoring them. Um, two years ago, we re- we were the recipients of the Wish grant. So we would like to just recognize them and personally thank them for that. So we will have a, um, a catered dinner that evening and um, host it as a fundraiser. So we're very excited. We've never done this before, so we're, we're kind of, you know, learning as we go. But mm-hmm. it will be September 19th at the Senior Center. Uh, Jerry Olson used to do some work with you folks through the uh, Washington, what was then called Redskins Alumni Association. Does that the relationship exist anymore? Oh, yes. Yes. We love Jerry. Um the, the issue is a lot of those former players that, that once came, uh, their health has declined. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of them are unable to make the trip from wherever they're living now. So we've looked into kind of revamping that, um, but we haven't really seemed to, to be able to find the players to, to be able to do that. And uh, what could you say to seniors who listen to this program but have not yet gone to the Senior Center for whatever reason? Uh, come check us out. Come hang out with us. Um, take a look around. If you know the, the the programming is not something that's your cup of tea, we can always, always, always use volunteers. So if if you're a senior and you're looking, you're retired, you're looking to to give back, um, it's a great place. Amy, and uh, just finally, uh, for those who want to find out more about the Senior Center and the jobs that are available and whatever else, where can you go to learn all this stuff? Uh, the best place is to check out our website at berkeleyseniorservices.org, or you can give us a call at 304-263-8873, or check out our Facebook page. Great to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, when is the next time you come in? Like, is it two months? I think so. Two months? Okay. Well, yeah. we'll see before summer's over then. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Amy Ordoff from Berkeley Senior Services.